I don't know if any, I think most people know, we've got Harry and I have a three-year-old grandson who is a treasure, but he um, finds it difficult sometimes doing as he's told when you want him to do something. And I always say to him, Charlie, make good choices. So he'll look at me a bit and then he'll think, and then sometimes he might do it. But I didn't realize how much I was saying it until we went to um, a little cafe the other the other day for a sandwich and i'm standing there at the counter and he's by the side and he said nanny make good choices <laughs> <laughs> that's what the sermon is about today it's about our christian values and helping us to make good choices so shall we just bow our heads Lord, we come before you today feeling excited, feeling sad, feeling lonely, feeling tired. You know deep in our hearts where we are with you. And Lord, I just pray that the words that I speak are words that you want us to hear. Amen. Amen. Right, this is the seventh Sunday of the church's season. Trinity, I looked it up last week. And I'm using the lectionary reading. And it continues the study of Matthew's gospel. In fact, I decided to do a bit of investigating to see when the gospel changed. But it goes right up until Advent. So by the time we reach Advent, we'll know pretty much about Matthew's gospel, won't we? If we're here. And today, it's a continuation of last week's gospel reading. It's the second parable from chapter 13, and it's still about the scattering of seeds. But unlike last week's parable, this one's entitled The Sowing of the Weeds. And in the parable, Jesus is intending to reveal the character of God to his, to his disciples and to the people around who are listening, and how he reigns in heaven and he will come down and he will sort out the wheat from, from the, the chaff. And the story pinpoints the way God knows that we live with good and bad and how it's weaved, weaved into, the, into the, the, the very fabric of our lives. But as always, the teaching, Jesus' teaching is always pinpointed and it's accurate. And it's, you know, when, when, you, when you preach, you're worried to death that you'd done the wrong thing, said the wrong thing. But, you know, it must have been wonderful. Jesus just stood there and he spouted forth and everybody listened. Wow. <laughs> but the teaching starts, as, as we heard last week, as a large crowd. They're all keen to hear what he wants to say. And they're on the shores of the lake. They're fishermen, they're farmers, they're the ordinary people like us, you know, they're the ordinary people who live the ordinary lives. And he always pinpoints things that they understand. It, he, he sort of somehow gets into their psyche, if you like, because they're ordinary working people, that's the stories he tells, because he wants them to understand in ways that, that they, they are familiar with. I mean, and Catherine talked, talk, talked to us last week about about the scattering of the seeds didn't she and the farmer just went out and threw them and wherever they landed it just happened they happened to land there they either grew or they didn't but today's parable is something different god has picked out the seeds or the farmer has picked out the seeds just like god's picked out us so he's picked out the seeds and he's planted them where he wants them to be meticulously just like he's planted us where he wants us to be at this time so it begins and the seeds are planted and all's well and then despite everything that he's done to make sure those seeds are planted as they should be the enemy comes in overnight and the farmer is left with weeds growing amongst the good seeds. And as the weeks go by, the weeds grow and grow and they take over the fields. And the servants try and persuade their master to pick out the weeds, but he says, no, leave them, let them grow alongside. 
I'll pick out the weeds when I destroy things. It's my turn. I'll do it. The plot of the story is about good and evil, isn't it? And the correct term is dualism. God accepts us in his kingdom. We make a commitment to God. He makes a commitment to us. And he nurtures us. He nurtures us in good soil because he's forgiven our sins when we, when we commit, make our first commitment to God. He forgives our sins and he sets us in the good soil that he wants us to flourish in. He gives us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us make good choices. He provides church communities like ours to support each other. And he gives us everything within that community that we need to thrive. He gives us a place to hear his word. He gives us the cornerstone of our lives. And he gives it through people, through the Bible, through the Holy Spirit. So in theory, we should be good seeds because we've got everything there to make it so but the plot thickens doesn't it the weeds of the society that we live in and the choices we make enter our perfect soil and it begins the evil things begin to grow alongside our lives whether we're aware of it or not But if we go back to the original story for a minute, the weeds, they're, just, they're destroying and they're choking the crop. So the dilemma the farmer had, pull them out and remove them. But God doesn't do that, does he? Because he gives us choice. We can either choose to walk with him or we can choose to walk with the weeds. So the choice is ours, making the good choice. But it's not as easy as that, is it? Because although the parable itself demonstrates good and evil, it's, it's not a realistic picture of our world because we live in a world where good and bad, constructive and destructive, helpful and harmful, are all mixed up together in the daily lives that we lead. And we have to make decisions, small decisions, big decisions, and sometimes, we forget that we belong to God and we make the wrong choice and we have to come back into the good soil. We have to learn to let God guide us through all the confusion that we live in. But it's not easy. We all know that. We all have our individual relationship with God. But how often do we fall down? Me constantly. You know, I could, I could constantly, if, if every time I did something wrong or thought something wrong or said something wrong and I'd made a decision to kneel down and pray, I'd be there all day. You know, because that's what life is like, isn't it? You, you, you start each morning and, I, and I, every morning before I get up, I say, Lord, please give me patience today. Especially if it's a, if it's a Charlie day, please give me patience, Lord. Help me to be, and, and be your light and, and do what you want to do by 10 o'clock. I'll say no more. Because we are bombarded by the media, by um, other by other means, Facebook and all the other technology that other that young people um, are part of that tells the wrong things. It leads us in the wrong direction. I mean, I, I was listening, you know. Before, while I was trying to, to, to do this sermon, I was thinking about, I'd, wa I'd watch the national news and then I'd watch the, the local news and I'm thinking, it's just, I'm sure they, they, they make a decision not to actually publish something that's good because everything is doom and gloom and you watch it and you think, what is this world coming to? You know, you, you just can't, you just can't understand it because it, it isn't a good place to live. And yet among all this horror, there is good people. There is good seed. There are people who want to help. There are people who care about other people. 
There are people who will go the extra mile to support people. So the world isn't bad. It's just misdirected sometimes. And I know all of this. And I know what God does. And, and, and I, I totally believe that he can change whatever he chooses to believe. But it doesn't stop me having these questions in my mind. You know, things like, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, what, why do we still have wars and why and, and, and people and places get destroyed? Why is the greed and where is the, why is the violence? And will God prevail? Will there be justice for all the evil things that happen? But that's the opposite side of the coin, isn't it? We know what God is capable of. We know what the world is capable of. And we know that in the end, God will prevail because he is stronger than any other force of evil. And to me, as I was reading and studying what I was going to say for this, this, this talk, that parable gave me courage because it answered the hard questions. It gives me the courage to think that with patience and to work through situations of good or bad, God will support us. We have good soil. We have good people to help with our soil, to nurture us. We just have to get back on the right track. We just have to admit when we're wrong, when we've said or done something that's wrong. We, we don't have to be part of the society that we live in. So how do we stay in the good soil? How do we re surround ourselves by what's good? You don't need me to tell you this, do you? I'm only telling you what you already know. We use the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and the people of God to keep us on the straight and narrow. I mean, the passage from Romans, I always find Romans a bit confusing. I don't know about anybody else, but this is how basically I think what he's saying is that Rome, Rome was a very powerful um, empire. And Paul was writing to Romans, Roman Christians. And they were living and they were following some of Roman society. And he needed to remind them what is expected of the children of God. And Paul talks about either you belong to the spirit or you belong to the flesh. They can't, you can't be both. If you're the good seed living among the weeds, then you have to redefine your obligations to God rather than the obligations to the, to the society that they were living among. Because Roman society worshiped the emperor as God. So whenever there was a state event like, um, you know, in, in the big arenas, that, that particularly I'm particularly thinking of the one in Rome, the Colosseum, whenever there was things like that, they were actually going to worship the state of Rome. And God was reminding them that your first port of call, if you like, is to God. He said, you live in the world, but not of the world. And I think that's a clear message for us. You know, if we, if we are with, with spirit filled, we have to live with others. We have to learn to choose, make good choices, even though it's very, very hard. Because if we spent the whole of our lives in church here and we never went out, goodness, wouldn't it be easy? You know what I mean? You could, you could sort of sit and be, be nicey nicey to everybody and you wouldn't have evil thoughts and you wouldn't have thinking, oh, they're getting on my nerves or, do you know what I mean? You, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be lovely, wouldn't it? What a lovely world it would be living in. Perhaps that's a bit like heaven, you know. But, but we don't live like that, do we? Because the testing time comes the minute you walk through that door and then you begin to mix family, friends, work colleagues, the people you see, your neighbours. And, and sometimes it's easy to get sucked in into bad attitudes, to anger, to jealousy, to resentment, to dishonesty. And the thing goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Because we don't live in a bubble. 
We live, among the, uh, sorry, we live among those who have little faith or no faith or no rules to live by at all. And without realizing it, our good seed could be being choked by the weeds around us. I'm not saying anything that you don't already know. And sometimes it's hard to walk with God. It's hard not to join in with the gossip around a cup of tea. Or it's hard to go against what your family and friends want you to do. If you know it's going against God's teaching. It's hard to stand up and say, no, that's not what God wants of me. But he's given us the greatest gift. He's given us Jesus and he's given us the Holy Spirit. And he should be sitting on our shoulder and guiding us. Because, well, we don't want to be plucked out and burned with the weeds, do we? God won't stop yet the evil around us. Because it isn't time for the end of the world. So we have to live with it. We have to be not a part of it. We have to stand in the good soil and we have to allow him to nourish us every day through his word, through prayer, through being together. And suppose to finish off, the choice is simple, isn't it? Like Charlie asked me, is that a good choice, Nanny? Because the choice is simple. We either live in the spirit or we don't. Nothing else to say, is there? Amen.